Tonight, a local state representative selected to help come up with legislative solutions to prevent mass shootings. San Antonio Park and airport police officers suing the city over their pay. An update in the case against so-called killer nurse Janine Jones. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9, streaming from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. Texas leads the nation among unintentional shootings of children. This stat by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, just one of the reasons cited by Bear County leaders today for releasing a series of plans to address gun safety. Bear County unveiled six gun safety initiatives today. Among the plans is a new program announced by Sheriff Javier Salazar that would allow people to voluntarily turn in firearms for disposal or temporary safekeeping. Salazar says the sheriff's office will be able to store guns for a variety of reasons, including if people plan to travel for an extended period of time, if they've listed a home for sale, or even if they're just expecting house guests. Another one of the new initiatives includes tougher gun restrictions in domestic violence cases. We're asking the magistrate judges to make uh, a, as a condition of bond that these individuals not possess weapons. We're not going to allow you to possess weapons when you ought not to have a gun in your hand. Some of the other initiatives, including purchasing 14,000 gun locks, those locks will be distributed by University Health System. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf also announced that Freeman Coliseum will no longer host gun shows. The final two initiatives will focus on gun safety education. Meanwhile, another push at the state level to talk about curbing gun violence. In response to two recent mass shootings here in Texas, the state legislature has formed two committees to study gun violence. This is in addition to the eight executive orders issued by Governor Greg Abbott just last week. They were aimed at stopping potential mass shootings. Sarah Acosta spoke with the only San Antonio member of one of those committees about why she says strengthening background checks is on the table. The recent Texas shootings have resulted in an outcry to Governor Greg Abbott to call a special session to do something about gun violence. Yeah, okay. Instead, last week, the governor issued eight executive orders aimed at stopping potential mass shootings. In addition, two committees were created in the state legislature, one in the House and Senate, asked to study gun violence over the next 90 days and to make recommendations to the governor and lieutenant governor. It's more than a crisis, but it's a crisis not just in Texas, but across the country. There are 13 people on the state House committee and nine on the state Senate committee. Senator Donna Campbell from New Braunfels is part of the Senate committee. Representative Barbara Gervin Hawkins, a Democrat, is the only San Antonio representative to be part of the House committee. What I love about it most is that we're now taking a proactive role uh, and looking at those things that we can do. Both committees have been asked to study ways to keep firearms from felons and determine the effectiveness of current laws. That will include studying how to strengthen background checks, especially when it comes to stranger to stranger gun sales, which was reported to have happened in the shooting in Midland, Odessa. The background issue has to be addressed. We've got to tighten up any loopholes that exist. One of the other House members includes Representative Brooks Landgraf from Midland, Odessa. In a Facebook post last week, he said he is a strong supporter of the Second Amendment and that he is open to listening to ideas and suggestions to confront gun violence in Texas. Representative Gervin Hawkins says something has to be done about the sale of assault weapons. She says she wants to talk to hunters and gun supporters to make sure all sides are heard. Now, here at home, the third and final town hall meeting on gun violence will take place next week on the 18th. Myra. All right, thanks, Sarah. It is a fight to close the gap. The associations for San Antonio Park Police and airport officers have filed a joint lawsuit against the city of San Antonio and city manager Eric Walsh. Park Police Association President Henry Bassick says his officers want to be categorized and paid more like SAPD's general police force. Right now, more than 200 San Antonio Park and airport police fall under the broad umbrella of SAPD. Yet SAPD says the training, qualification and areas of responsibility separate them. But the other associations say that there are more similarities than there are differences. The base level of pay would change. The health care coverage would change. The incentive pays would change. The education pays would change. All of that would be the exact same because we would all be covered under one collective bargaining agreement. On the night, we will show you what this lawsuit is asking for and how SAPD is responding.
A mistake at the Bear County Jail sends the wrong inmate to a county mental health facility. The sheriff's office confirms that jail officers confused the inmate with another inmate who has the exact same name. The wrong Amanda Garcia was released into the county's mentally ill offenders facility that happened back on August 30th. According to the sheriff's office, the mistake was discovered a day later and Garcia was brought back to the jail. Then hours after that, the second Amanda Garcia was transferred. BCSO says it is investigating and the disciplinary action for the staff involved in this is coming. Now this is the latest in a string of incidents at the jail. We have a timeline right now on our website. Just go to ksat.com. Let's turn to the nine at nine tonight. These are some of the most interesting stories making headlines around the world, around the country and right here at home. SAPD names a suspect in the shooting of an officer today. A Texas man is accused of vandalizing the famous charging bull statue in New York City and a Cadillac at the Cadillac Ranch was set on fire. Here's tonight's nine at nine. Family members of an Ohio boy say school staff ruined his ninth birthday because of a lunch debt policy. The lunch lady didn't say anything, took away my TV breadsticks and sauce, put them over there, and took out bread, cheese on bread, out of the fridge, and put it on my lunch tray. The family says the boy was humiliated when cafeteria workers threw his lunch out in front of his classmates. The school says they sent home a note to the family to let them know the child's account was delinquent, but they are considering changing how they handle these situations. We now know the identity of the 17 year old suspect wanted in connection to the shooting of a San Antonio police officer early this morning. Police are searching for Devin Seth Perez in connection with that crime. That San Antonio police officer is recovering after he was shot in the foot. The shooting happened on Candelia Avenue on the city's south side after officers responded to the scene of an attempted carjacking. According to Police Chief William McManus, the officer was fortunate because so many rounds were fired at him. The oldest Cadillac at Amarillo's Cadillac Ranch set on fire. Police are searching for whoever is responsible. The ranch's owners do plan to press charges. Here at home, San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers asking for the public's help identifying the suspect in a church's chicken robbery. This happened last week at the restaurant on Steams Avenue on the east side. 17 people trampled by an elephant during a parade in Sri Lanka. The elephant was reportedly spooked during that event and began running. Those hurt were taken to a hospital and almost all have been discharged. Police say a man from Dallas is responsible for damaging the iconic charging bull statue in New York City. The man is accused of repeatedly smashing a banjo into that statue. He's been charged with criminal mischief. So far, no word on a motive. Take a look at this. The National Weather Service says more than a thousand lightning strikes were recorded in western Washington on Saturday. There were more than 200 lightning strikes over Seattle alone in just one hour. A father and daughter in Georgia catch what may be the largest alligator in Georgia history. The man had only been gator hunting once before, and he was taking his daughter for the first time when they snagged this 14 foot, 700 pound gator. It took a crew of five more than five hours to haul the animal into the boat. An Oklahoma veteran walks for the first time in 10 years thanks to technology. The woman was paralyzed after a car crash, but she was recently fitted with special leg braces. It's a robotic exoskeleton and what it does is it uses um, this external frame that attaches kind of around her torso area and it helps her to be able to stand and walk. The woman went to the zoo with her daughter to try to walk around using the exoskeleton for the first time. To read more about these nine stories, go to ksat.com slash news at nine. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey joining us tonight here on the nine and we had some good clouds out there. We're hoping but that's a sign of things to come. Yeah, we did have some good clouds and we even had some areas of rain around in South Central Texas. And if you missed out today, you'll get it again tomorrow. So that that's the good news there. There is going to be a chance for rain over the next couple of days, especially in the afternoon. So I want to show you a gift cast today because we have fun here <laughs> on the news at nine. Here is a really cool gift about how cloudy it's going to be tomorrow. I found this one online. If my clicker will work, that would be great. It's not working right oh, now, no. but we're going to make it work. Let's do this. 
What a oh, man. gifting disappointment. Can somebody disappointment. go over there and press the space bar on the weather computer? That would be great. Look, for now, though, you can see the beautiful skyline of San Antonio. And hey, we should point out that's one of the awesome features of the nine. We're right here in the middle of the we newsroom. We are right here in the middle of the so newsroom. So when things go haywire. So Lexi can press the space bar. Whoa. Uh -oh. How's that space bar going? That was Patrick. Well, pressing buttons that he shouldn't press. My computer has completely frozen on me. Uh oh. So I'm gonna have to do some technical work on that, Myra. Okay. But coming up, I am going to talk about fall and how it's right around the corner. So I'm gonna get this working. But for now, let's go ahead and continue on with the show. Yeah, let's take a look at an adult Sounds. It's time for another Adulting Hacks on KSAT News at 9. And joining me now is Rick Monroe with Maverick Whiskey. And we're going to be doing a little bit of Whiskey 101. Some tips to know for people like myself that think they know a little bit about whiskey, but probably don't know as much as this guy right here. So, Rick, what's some of the first things that people need to know when they sort of step out and they want to try some new whiskeys? First thing most people don't realize is that whiskey comes off the still clear. Mm -hmm. And so all the color that you see, and you go to the liquor store, you pick up a bottle of whiskey, it's brown, right? So all that color comes from the barrel. This is called a Glencairn glass. This is great for, for nosing and sipping okay. uh, spirits. Basically what this does is it focuses all those aromas right at the right at the tip of the glass. Okay. Right. And so you, you pour yourself a little, uh, you know, one or two ounces and then let it sit for five to 10 minutes, let it come up to room temperature. And as the, the whiskey oxidizes, as it interacts with the air, uh, you know, more of those aromatic compounds will be released and, okay. and you'll get to smell and, and taste uh, more of what's, you know, hiding in that liquid. When you're sampling whiskey neat, just add a little drop of water and it'll, it'll help to, okay. to proof it down a little bit and cut some of that bite. Yeah. On the back of the bottle, uh, you know, it'll say where it's distilled. So this one's mm -hmm. in, distilled by us and bottled by us okay. uh, here in San Antonio, and it's distilled from grain. Some companies source their whiskey. There's, there's nothing wrong with that, but you know, some of them try and hide that fact. What are some of the biggest questions that people ask you, uh, being the head distiller here at Maverick Whiskey? Everybody wants to know the mash bill and then, and that mash or the bill, okay. yeah or the <laughs> grain bill, and so that's just the ingredients you use to make the whiskey from. Most of our whiskeys are made from corn rye and barley. And I enjoy, you know, a nice glass of whiskey with like a steak and some, uh, you, you know, some risotto and some yeah. asparagus. You know, ask your bartenders. They, they know a lot about the products and, okay. you know, they can help you out and yeah. kind of guide you on your on your tasting journey. So should we try this sure, out? Sure, yeah. Okay, I'm very curious about Cheers. that. That was nah. good. <laughs> <laughs> a little heat on it. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, RJ's got it rough, I tell you. Adulting Hacks is just one of the series we feature exclusively here on the News at 9. Here's a look at some of the others we have in our lineup. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for a new installment in our consumer series, Money It's Personal. For now, Sarah Spivey is back. The computer is working, and I don't know if people are ready for this, Sarah. I think they are. It's a GIF forecast. You know, GIF is those moving images. And I thought, hey, tomorrow there's going to be some morning clouds. <laughs> so... It's a cat cloud. Does it make sense? Not really, but it's there. It's the internet. But we will not soon forget it. No, I we can will tell not. you that. It's actually my favorite gif of a cat ever. Um, 75 <laughs> tomorrow, there are going to be some areas of morning clouds. Say goodbye to the cat cloud gif because we're going to move on to Lucy around the afternoon. <laughs> nah. 89 degrees in the afternoon, south southeast winds at 10 to 15, gusting up to 20. There is a 20% chance for showers and storms around the lunch hour, but it's really in the afternoon after we get some daytime heating that hopefully we'll be singing in the rain, all right? 30% chance for isolated showers and storms, 96 for the high, and a lot like today, that's going to be the weather tomorrow in the last next couple of days as well. As well. Here's a look at today's rain. You can see just how spotty showers and storms were. But down in Petite, we did have a report of a stronger wind gust from somebody who lives down there. Uh, so some of these storms, when they develop, they could pack a bit of a punch. But hopefully you'll just get some much needed rain in your backyard. This is what the high res future cast looks like as we head into Tuesday afternoon. You can see east of uh, I-35, that's the better chance for isolated to scattered showers and storms. And then this is intriguing. Our high-res future cast is 
hinting at some more development west of San Antonio in the overnight hours. If that verifies, we'd continue to have a chance for isolated showers and storms into Wednesday morning. And the good news is Wednesday as well in the afternoon, we have a decent chance for isolated showers and storms. Unfortunately, not feeling like September over the next several days. 97 by the weekend and temperatures climbing even more on Monday. I'll be back in just a little while though to talk about the official start to fall and when maybe we could expect uh, our first cold front. Myra? That cat gif though. It worked? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm sticking with tonight. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. You're watching KSAT News at 9. A surprise in the case against the so-called killer nurse. Defense attorneys for Janine Jones have dropped their request for a competency trial. After uh, uh, some research and some uh, observations and some discussions, uh, our position at this point is that we're going to stipulate to the report that my client is now competent. Janine Jones is accused of murder and the deaths of five infants under her care at San Antonio area hospitals back in the mid 80s. She had previously served a life sentence for killing a Kerrville child by injecting it with a lethal, lethal dose of a muscle relaxant back in 1984. Jones was scheduled for release in 2017 thanks to a Texas law meant to prevent prison overcrowding. But before she was released from prison, she was indicted in these five new cases. Jones remains behind bars in the Bear County Jail. A trial date will likely be sometime in early January. Let's turn now to some of tonight's biggest stories. The country's top weather agency has reportedly launched an ethics investigation aimed at itself. That's according to a Washington Post report. The Post reports that the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, is investigating an unsigned press release sent out on Friday. In it, NOAA disavows a National Weather Service's tweet that contradicted a claim by President Trump that Hurricane Dorian would affect Alabama. The Washington Post reports the agency's acting chief scientist blasted the move in an internal email. He reportedly stated the response was not based on science, but was instead about, quote, reputation and appearance, end quote. He also reportedly called the press release political and a danger to public health and safety. The number of measles cases in the U.S. continues to grow. As of Thursday, there were 1,241 cases. That's according to the CDC. It's a rise of seven cases from the week before. Amazon is looking for more than 30,000 new workers. The online retailer will recruit help in six cities this month. It's calling Amazon Career Day the nation's biggest job fair. Events will be held in Boston, Chicago, Dallas, Nashville, Seattle, and Arlington, Virginia. The company says all jobs pay at least $15 an hour and have benefits. You can register online at Amazon.jobs. Back here at home, Bear County Sheriff's deputies are now being ordered to do everything they can to avoid euthanizing injured animals. But that relies on the thinly staffed county animal control. The old BCSO policy allowed deputies to request permission to kill a mortally wounded animal to keep it from suffering. But a new directive requires Bear County Animal Control Services be notified when an injured animal's owner can't be found. The responding animal control officer is the one who decides what, to, what will happen next. But the problem is the county only has four officers who work Monday through Friday. On overnights and weekends, only one is on call. We ask the sheriff if animal control is really going to be able to help out in all situations. If, if they can make it out, great. If they can't make it out, then that's... That's going to be something we'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it, but we're certainly going to make the call and we're certainly going to do everything in our power to keep from having to destroy that animal on the side of the road. 
The so-called roadside euthanasia is not prohibited by the new policy, but Salazar says they are asking deputies to wait a reasonable amount of time and exhaust other means if they're able to before making the choice to kill an injured animal. Welcome back to the News at 9. I'm meteorologist Sarah Spivey. Well, fall is right around the corner. Finally, we can start talking about cooler weather. Fall officially starts on September 23rd with the autumnal equinox. My friends, that is only two weeks away. Of course, we know though here in South Central Texas, it can be warm well into fall. We oftentimes have to wait for our first cold front to enjoy some cooler weather, especially in the morning hours. And I was actually looking at Steve Brown's records of when the first cold fronts have occurred over the past few years. Last year, it was September 22nd, which was actually on the fall equinox. The year before that, September 26th. year before that, September 26th. But in 2015, we had to wait all the way until mid-October for a proper cold front to move through. On average, the first cold front will arrive by the end of September, but I did want to put that 2015 data there because, as you know, we can end up having a pretty warm start to October sometimes. So, so all depends on what the forecast is going to have in store. By the way, for September itself, when we start off, we average 94 for the high, and by the end of the month, we're sitting comfortably at 86 for the high. Our average lows go from 73 at the start of the month to a crisp 65 by September 30th. So again, those are averages, and that's just something to look forward to. Unfortunately, though, in the seven-day forecast, we are just going to be seeing a lot of heat. Of course, like I expected, explained earlier some showers and storms uh, both tomorrow and Tuesday, but by the weekend temperatures will be climbing back up to 97. The city of San Antonio is now facing a lawsuit over its decision to exclude Chick-fil-A from the airport. The group behind that suit cited the so-called Chick-fil-A law. That law went into effect on September 1st. Under the Chick-fil-A law, government entities are banned from retaliating based on support of religious organizations. In March, the city council voted to block Chick-fil-A from opening a restaurant at the airport. Some council members cited what they called the chain's legacy of anti-LGBTQ behavior. The San Antonio family organization filed the lawsuit citing the new Chick-fil-A law. But what they didn't think about are a couple of things. First of all, what, what's it going to cost the taxpayers of San Antonio to defend such a weak case? Because our facts are irrefutable. <laughs> We're going to win this case. We'll take it all the way to the Supreme Court if necessary. A city spokesperson released a statement that says in part, quote, this lawsuit is an attempt by the plaintiffs to improperly use the court to advance their political agenda. Among the many weaknesses in their case, they are trying to rely on a law that did not exist when council voted on the airport concessions contract, end quote. Let's find out what's trending right now on KSAN.com with Ivan Herrera. Myra, thank you for having me. All right, three great trending stories for you today. First one up, a San Antonio favorite made Southern Living's top 50 barbecue joints mm. for 2019. Okay. All right, so I don't know if you've heard of it, Two Bros Barbecue. It came yes. in at number 48 this year. So it's the only San Antonio spot to actually make the list, nice. which is pretty cool. Okay, top so, 50. Yeah, not bad. We're in there, so, 48. Yeah, and other Texas cities such as Austin, Lockhart, Houston also made the list. So we're still special. <laughs> I feel like we're still special. Okay. And of course, if you want to know more about Two Bros Barbecue, we actually have an essay live clip on KSAT.com right oh, now nice. where they went to go visit a lot of good food. It looks delicious. Yeah. I wanted to eat the screen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next up, breaking a world record doesn't necessarily mean having a unique talent or a lot of skill. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, there are some weird ones. 
So yeah. I'm going to tell you about some of the Guinness, so the Guinness Book of World Records, the 2020 version is coming out. So I'm going to tell you about some of the weird ones that oh. that we found in there. You know so, these are going to be funky. Yes. Yeah, so a 112 pound woman nicknamed Cardboard Shell broke the world record for the most mayonnaise eaten in three minutes. Oh. And let me tell you how much that is. That's three and a half jars of mayo just three in three minutes. Three and a half yeah. jars of mayonnaise. So, <laughs> and I'll tell you about mm -hmm. one more. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> A man we broke can, the world record. We can record. We can just. I'm, no. <laughs> this one's not that bad. So a man broke the world record for the most candles extinguished uh, by nunchucks in okay. one minute. Uh, most yes. candles extinguished by nunchucks. nunchucks. Yes. Yeah. So what he okay. did is he put out 52 open flames by whacking the tip of the candles with the nunchuck. <laughs> so now, that's a cool you know, world record. How many people across the world were um, in Trying contention it? for that record? I don't know, but you do definitely have to buy the book to find out. But there's a lot more of the weird ones we have on KSET.com, so definitely check that out, definitely read that. Yeah, it's, there's a record for everything, apparently. Yes, apparently so. So the last one is gonna cause some riot with some Target lovers, I'm ah, one of those. Okay. So the retailer is actually revamping its loyalty program, Cartwheel is no more. Um, I used to use Cartwheel a lot. So this new one is called Target Circle. It's gonna, op uh, it's gonna start October 6th nationwide. Some of the perks of the program include 1% on purchases, personalized deals, which is awesome, and early access to sales. So it's a free program. If you okay. have the red card, you're already you're already gonna be enrolled in it. Or if you have a Target.com like account, they'll just enroll you in it automatically. So the cool slash scary thing about this is that they're gonna actually have more data on your shopping habits. So they'll actually send you some personalized emails. So if you're buying more baby stuff, they'll send you like baby coupons or whatever. Gotcha. So I think that's cool, but it's also kind of scary because yeah. it's like more it's data helpful, on us. It's but it's more yeah. info But the internet you'll get to has. save a lot of money. Yeah. So okay, well. That's all I have for you. Thank you for having me, Maybe a uh, cardboard shell could get a deal on some mayonnaise. Yes. With this new. <laughs> program. Thanks, Ivan. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back. Thanks so much for watching KSAT News at 9. You can catch us here Monday through Friday, any way that you stream. I'm Myra Arthur. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Good night.